Natasha Romanoff is one of my favorite female characters in any series. She's such a badass and was very well played by Scarlett Johansson. She joined the MCU back in 2010, even before Cap and Thor, who joined in 2011. In this video, I'm going to look back at the MCU and gather all information on her character, whether that be from the films, the comics, or any other media that she appears in that's canon to the MCU. They're actually making a Black Widow movie, so this video could not only be a tribute and recap, but it could also prepare you for everything you need to know about Black Widow before you see her film. Before we get started, there are going to be major spoilers for the entire MCU, including Endgame, though the Russo Brothers spoiler ban is ended. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Natalia Alyanovna Romanoff, later known as Natasha, was born in 1984 in Stalingrad. When she was very young, Romanoff was recruited by the KGB at a Red Room, a secret Soviet brainwashing and training program. She was educated and taught to follow their rules and beliefs in spycraft. She struggled with her ceremony, which involved killing a living person. She failed many times on purpose so that she would not have to do this, but she was told that it was necessary. She eventually went through with it and successfully passed the test. As a final ceremony to complete her training, she was sterilized meaning that she could never have kids, the idea being to have her avoid distractions and focus solely on her missions. She would go on to regret this very much later in life, however. After leaving the Red Room, she went on to become regarded as a master spy and one of the world's greatest assassins. Her ruthless effectiveness in later years earned her the codename Black Widow. She became so good that she became a growing threat to global security, which brought her attention to S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury sent Clint Barton, or Hawkeye, to eliminate her. Hawkeye, however, disobeyed Fury's orders after seeing how impressive she was. He recommended that instead of taking her out, S.H.I.E.L.D. should recruit her. Fury eventually agreed, and when they approached her, she defected from Russia and joined the ranks of S.H.I.E.L.D. Natalia Romanoff eventually changed her name to Natasha Romanoff. She instantly became close with Clint, and they developed the ultimate partnership. Together, they handled tactical missions around the world and were unstoppable. She asked Barton why he spared her, and he replied saying, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. The two became so close that she was the only person besides Fury that Clint told about his family. Romanoff opened up to him, sharing the fact that she could not have kids after being sterilized. This made Clint want Romanoff to meet his kids, and she became somewhat of an aunt to them. In one of her missions, she was tasked with protecting a scientist, and they were attacked by a mysterious assassin known as the Winter Soldier. He shot their tires and they went off a cliff, but Romanoff being Romanoff managed to save both of them and used her body to block the assassin from hitting his target. This however was not enough to stop the Winter Soldier, who shot the bullets right through her body, killing the scientist. It was the first mission that she had ever failed, and she did not take it lightly. She attempted to track down the Winter Soldier, but was eventually forced to give up, accepting the fact that he was more elusive than any other enemy that she she had ever encountered. On another mission, she was sent to ruin an operation of the Ten Rings by boarding their plane and causing an explosion. Part of her work at S.H.I.E.L.D. was to go undercover, taking the name Natalie Rushman. She did modeling work in Tokyo, Italy, France, and the U.S. under that alias. She used that same name when Fury sent her on a mission to infiltrate Stark Industries. She worked her way to Tony Stark, learning that another employee was delivering documents to him. To ensure that she was the one to do that, she put a pill in the employee's drink to get her sick. She volunteered to replace her, and she took the documents to Stark's house. When she got there, her mission was to watch him as he was getting sick, and on top of that, to assess whether Stark was suitable for the Avengers initiative. Tony told her to box, and Happy attempted to train her, only to get thrown on the ground, unaware of her insane agility and fighting skills. Stark was so impressed that he promoted her to his assistant from then on. She observed Stark closely to see if he was Avengers material, and when she saw him fight Whiplash on the racetrack, she was very impressed. On Stark's birthday, she encouraged him to have a wild night, and when he got wasted, he let her use his Mark IV's gauntlet to blast an ice sculpture. During the party, the two flirted a lot, but little did Stark know, Romanoff was just doing what she had to do for the mission. During Tony and Rhodey's fight at the party, Romanoff called Fury, telling him not to come to the house. Fury instead confronted Stark at Randy's Donuts. While there, Fury revealed the true identity of Romanoff as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Huh. You're fired. That's not up to you. While they were meeting, she gave Tony a short-term cure for his sickness, and together, she and Fury gave him the confidence and supplies from his dad to get him back to work and to fix the problem. Romanoff remained undercover as Stark's assistant, while Tony found a permanent cure. Later on, Romanoff went to the Stark Expo with Pepper, where they unveiled Hammer Drones, the government's version of Tony's armor. When the suits were taken over by Whiplash, Romanoff went with Happy to stop them. There she took down many guards that got in her way with amazing ease. 
She found Whiplash's control center and shut down the Hammer Drones and Rhodey's War Machine armor, allowing for Tony and Rhodey to finish Whiplash off. For her next mission, she was ordered by Fury to monitor Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk, at Culver University. There, she watched General Ross and his men try to stop Banner, and she almost got hit by a part of a broken building while on the phone with Fury, telling him that Banner had changed into the green monster. Later on in that mission, Romanoff was put in danger again, this time getting hurt by Abomination. When ordered to make sure that Banner did not leave anything for Dr. Samuel Stearns, who Banner was working on, a deranged Stearns attempted to recruit and go after Romanoff. Romanoff reacted casually by shooting him in the leg. From a distance, she saw Hulk and Abomination fight, and ultimately, she failed her mission, allowing Hulk to escape after his battle with Abomination. Right after that, she had yet another mission, this time to recover missing Stark Industries technology, and was undercover as Tatiana Sokova. While working at a nightclub, she interrogated Mikhail, one of the world's most successful illegal arms dealers. During this, however, Mikhail was killed by an unknown woman, and Romanoff was forced to leave the club very fast, fighting off several security men. After she returned to the hotel, she was attacked by a team of masked mercenaries, but she defeated them all and received a SIM card to reach the unknown woman that she had seen at the nightclub. Later, Black Widow talked to the unknown woman, who was named Sophia, and she learned that she was a fan who wanted to take over the name Black Widow. Phil Coulson later had to save her from Sophia after she was almost drowned in cold water. On that same mission, Romanoff discovered that a Jericho missile was going to explode between Russia and North Korea, something that would greatly destabilize world peace. She infiltrated the launching area and destroyed the missile before it went off, and Sophia and a billionaire named Frampton, who funded the project, were both arrested for attempting to launch the missile. Romanoff's next target was an illegal weapons dealer, and while in the mission, she was knocked out and woke up tied to a chair. The man interrogating her spilled all of his secrets, which was exactly what she wanted, but her cover was blown when Coulson called her. She was angry at first, but her heart sank when Coulson said that Barton, her best friend, had been compromised. She then beat the crap out of the man interrogating her and left. She learned that they were gathering the Avengers, and she was told to go recruit Banner, aka the Hulk, which scared her a bit, considering the last time that she had been in his presence. When she met with him, she told him that they needed his brains and not the Hulk. She promised that they would not imprison him, but when he tested her, she pulled a gun on him aimed right at his head. Despite this, Romanoff was still able to recruit him. When she got back with Banner, she met Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, and later she flew the jet after Cap and Iron Man captured Loki, but it was boarded by his brother Thor, who took Loki from the ship. After Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America fought, they brought Loki back to the ship, and Romanoff flew them back to the helicarrier where they imprisoned Loki. Romanoff later interrogated Loki and pretended to break down to reveal his real plan, to turn Banner into the Hulk. So, Banner. That's your play. What? Loki means to unleash the Hulk. The helicarrier that they were on later came under attack, and Romanoff tried to talk Banner down, but was unsuccessful. With a hurt leg, she ran from the now-transformed Hulk as he crushed through the ship. He hit her hard, throwing her against a wall. When he was about to get one more big hit, Thor came to her rescue. Right after that, still dazed from the Hulk, she was forced to fight her best friend, Agent Barton, who was under the control of Loki. She took him down and then knocked him out, snapping him out of Loki's control. She stayed with him in the recovery room and told him that it wasn't his fault that he had killed numerous S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Captain came in, and after Romanoff nodded to Cap that Barton was okay to go, the three went to New York to confront Loki. The Battle of New York commenced, and even though she was just a human spy with no specific powers, she held her own, making a big difference in the battle, and worked well with the other Avengers. At the end of the battle, she used Loki's scepter to close the portal where the Jatari army were coming, ending the invasion. After the Battle of New York, Romanoff teamed up with Cap, and they ran many operations together. In one mission, she went undercover after a powerful weapon called the Zodiac Weapon was stolen from S.H.I.E.L.D. When she found out where it was, she and Cap went there and took the men out, successfully retrieving the weapon. Natasha and Steve were sent on a mission in Brooklyn, where Steve lived before he got the Super Serum and joined the army. He showed Natasha where he grew up, which drew out their target, and they changed into Black Widow and Captain America, successfully stopping the mercenaries and rescuing the kidnapped scientist who they were holding. The two later went on yet another mission, this time taking back a vessel in the Indian Ocean that had been hijacked by pirates. Romanov did her thing, single-handedly taking out many of the pirates with ease. Romanoff's real reason for being on the mission, however, was not to stop the pirates, but to retrieve confidential S.H.I.E.L.D. files and put them on a flash drive. Cap argued with her about this, but as they did so, a grenade came their way, which they successfully avoided, but their target, the leader of the pirates, got away, which Romanoff took the blame for. After hearing that Fury was critically injured, she met with Steve at the hospital to see him. Romanoff became distraught when Fury died right in front of her. 
From what Steve told her, it sounded as though the person responsible was the Winter Soldier, the assassin behind the first mission that she had ever failed. When S.H.I.E.L.D. was taken over by Hydra, they had to go on the run. They tried to decrypt the flash drive that Romanoff had gotten and successfully got the location that they needed. The two went to that location, which was Camp Lee. There they found out that Hydra had been rebuilt inside of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the help of Zola. Before they could learn anything else, however, S.H.I.E.L.D. stormed in and blew the base up. Cap using his shield made them both survive the blast, but Romanoff was knocked unconscious. The two went to seek help from Sam Wilson, and they questioned Agent Jasper. Because it's really not just style, Rogers. You're right. It's not. It's hers. Romanoff kicked him off the roof, only for Sam to catch him. While interrogating him, they found out that Hydra was going to use a weapon to eliminate people who they saw as threats, like Bruce Banner or Stephen Strange. Romanoff along with Rogers and Wilson were attacked by the Winter Soldier and he killed Agent Jasper. Seeing that she was no match against him, Romanoff used a bunch of different techniques to draw him out or to trick him to get the upper hand a few times during the fight. As she was telling civilians to clear the area, the Winter Soldier shot her in the shoulder. The fight ended with Romanoff shooting a grenade launcher, making the Winter Soldier flee, who was now discovered to be Bucky Barnes, Steve's old friend from the 40s. Natasha, Steve, and Sam were all taken into custody by S.H.I.E.L.D., who was actually Hydra. Maria Hill saved them, however, and they all escaped. They were taken to a secret facility where they discovered that Fury's death had been faked and that he was alive and well. To stop the weapon from being used, Romanoff posed as a member of the World Security Council using a photostatic veil. When she found out that S.H.I.E.L.D. had been completely taken over by Hydra, she began disabling security protocols and released all of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra's secrets on the internet. Romanoff used her Black Widow Bite weapon to disable her name tag that was rigged to kill her, and Fury shot Pierce, ending their fight. She had been knocked out while disabling the name tag, but she awoke moments later to the desperate pleas of Fury for her to wake up. Natasha, come on! Romanoff later attended a government inquiry into the Hydra affair. She stated that she and the other agents that fought Hydra would not be arrested because they were the best qualified to protect the world, and after those words, she left the inquiry. After Steve asked, she looked into Bucky Barnes and gave him the documents that she had acquired. A few months later, Romanoff went back to Russia in hopes of finding her parents. When she got the location, however, all she found were two graves, which she set flowers on. With the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers reassembled, thwarting several Hydra plots of world domination. When Romanoff was in Sudan, she hijacked a plane that was carrying Hydra operatives who had perfected a weapon using Chitauri technology. Natasha called on the other Avengers, who were all doing different things. The team got together and stop the doctor before she caused any damage with the weapons. The next mission together was to recapture Loki's scepter from another Hydra base. When Clint was hit in the field, Natasha immediately ran over to him, worried about her best friend. Cap later ordered her to calm the Hulk down so that he could turn back into Banner, clearly showing that the two had a deep connection. When they returned to Avengers Tower, she sat next to Barton as his wound was healed and asked the doctor if he would be okay, which of course he was. During a party at Avengers Tower, Natasha began flirting with Bruce, hinting to him that she had feelings for him. The party was later interrupted by Ultron, and she, along with the other Avengers, fought the Ultron sentries that he was controlling. When they went to stop Ultron, Romanoff was sent into a vision by Scarlet Witch that took her back to her training in the Red Room. Scarlet Witch had done the same thing to the Hulk, which caused him to go on a rampage, forcing the Avengers to go underground at Clint's house. Natasha was very happy to see the kids and see his wife, who was pregnant with another child on the way. Being around Clint and his family made Natasha want the same thing, and she told Bruce that they should run away together and admitted that she could not have kids, opening up about the Red Room. She told him that he wasn't the only monster on the team, and the two considered running away, but their plans had to wait when Fury arrived, telling them that they had to stop Ultron. The Avengers split up, Black Widow going with Cap and Hawkeye to stop Ultron from obtaining the Cradle, a piece of technology that would give Ultron a real body. She rode on a motorcycle and picked up Cap's shield, which he had dropped. I'm always picking up after you, boys. Black Widow got in the truck with the Cradle in it and made it land in the Quinjet that Hawkeye was piloting. They successfully made it land, but as it did, Ultron grabbed Romanoff by the leg and took her with him. She was held captive until Bruce came to her rescue. Bruce told her that this was their chance to run away, and Natasha kissed him. But when she pulled away, she said that she needed the other guy, referring to the Hulk, so that they could stop Ultron, which she knew was more important at this moment in time. She participated in the Battle of Sokovia and fought side by side with the Avengers to put a stop to Ultron once and for all. 
Before that, however, as the battle wound down, Natasha went to calm Hulk down, but a broken Ultron that had taken the wheel of the Quinjet fired at him, making him angry and making Natasha unable to bring Banner back. She later called him in the Quinjet, desperate to start a new life with Bruce. We can't track you in stealth mode, so help me out. I need He cut her off mid-sentence, breaking her heart. The happiness that she had felt for that brief moment, thinking that she was finally going to have a normal life with Bruce, was gone just like that. She ended up not seeing Bruce again for years after that. She threw herself back into work to cope with this loss, and co-led the second incarnation of the Avengers, which included Scarlet Witch, War Machine, Vision, and Falcon. She and Cap trained together, fighting each other for practice in the Avengers facility, both of them an equal match for the other, despite Romanoff having no powers and Steve being enhanced. After the Battle of Sokovia, Hydra collected many parts from the destroyed Ultron sentries and used them to make one giant robot called Ultimo. Hydra then used Ultimo to attack a small village where Romanoff and the rest of the New Avengers took it down. The New Avengers were later tasked on another mission to ambush Crossbones, and Romanoff kicked ass as always. But the battle went horribly wrong when Scarlet Witch wasn't able to contain a blast that destroyed a whole floor of a building. This incident and a few others led to the Sokovia Accords, something that would make the government keep the Avengers in check. This split the Avengers in half, some siding with Iron Man and the Accords, while others sided with Cap and did not agree with the Accords. Romanoff shocked everyone by choosing to side with Stark. She called Clint and asked if he would sign, but he told her that he was retired. When Steve went to Peggy Carter's funeral, Natasha stopped by the cathedral to make sure he was okay. When she told him who would sign the Accords, she asked him to reconsider, saying that signing the Accords would keep the Avengers together. He refused to do so, however, to which she replied saying that it was okay, because she was only there to support him as a friend. At the Vienna Conference for the Accords, she met T'Challa, aka Black Panther, and his father. And moments later, an explosion went off, killing T'Challa's father. Everyone thought that Bucky Barnes was behind the bombing, and afterwards, Romanoff approached T'Challa to make sure that he was okay. She then told him that the task force would decide who brought Bucky in, but T'Challa did not agree with this. Don't bother me, Romanoff. I'll kill him myself. She then got a call from Steve, making sure that she was okay, and she once again asked him to sign the Accords, but he once again refused. Natasha didn't really care about the Accords. All that she cared about was keeping her family, the Avengers, together. She was trying to convince people to sign the Accords because she knew that that would be the easiest way to do so. Later on, when Bucky went into his Hydra programming, he fought many of the Avengers, including Romanoff, who he strangled, but T'Challa stepped in and saved her just in time. After that, a huge civil war broke out, Cap's side versus Iron Man's side. Romanoff fought against several Avengers on Cap's side, including Ant-Man and even her best friend, Clint. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. At the end of the fight, she came to and stepped in front of Steve and Bucky, who were making their way to a ship to escape. Realizing that Cap was not going to stop, she shot Black Panther, paralyzing him and allowing Cap and Bucky to get away. Tony told Natasha that because she betrayed them, the government was coming for her, and he denounced their friendship. Boy, it must be hard to shake the double agent thing on sticks in the DNA. Are you incapable of letting go of your ego for one goddamn second? Romanoff was forced to go underground, and she, Steve, and Sam teamed up, and she used her KGB contacts to track down and put a stop to people using Tatari technology. Fury later met up with them and asked them to make up with Tony, but they refused. They later received a phone call from Bruce Banner, and they headed to Edinburgh to protect Vision from an incoming threat. The three arrived and fought off the Black Order members with great ease, showing how well the three worked together after all of that time of being on the run. When they all went to the Avengers facility, Natasha was reunited with Bruce for the first time in almost three years. She had been so excited to run away with him and was once again abandoned, something she was very used to at this point. And now, three years later, neither of them knew what to say. This is all. Romanoff participated in the Battle of Wakanda, where they protected Vision and the Mind Stone. She saved Scarlet Witch, who was about to be subdued by Midnight. At the end of the battle, Thanos snapped his fingers with all six of the Infinity Stones, and Natasha watched as those around her disappeared into dust. Two or three weeks after that, the remaining Avengers minus Tony went to confront Thanos and killed him. They had hoped to get the stones to undo what Thanos had done, but because he had destroyed them, this was not possible. Over the next five years, Natasha was desperate to keep the team together and did nothing but command some of the Avengers, who she sent on missions to keep the world in balance, all of them reporting to her. One day, Cap asked her if what she was doing had to be done, and Natasha refused to answer that question. She had finally found a home and a family with the Avengers, and she refused to let it go, even if it was barely hanging by a thread. She told Steve that she was better because of the team, and it's obvious that she did not want to lose the good person that she had become. 
The only way that she saw that as possible was if she kept doing this job. During one briefing, she was told of Clint, who had gone rogue and on a killing spree of high up gang members and criminals. Rhodey told her about a crime scene with a bunch of dead bodies, and Natasha was in denial, saying that it must have been the work of a rival gang, but deep down, she knew it wasn't. When Rhodey said that it was so vicious that he did not even want to find him, Natasha got teary-eyed and begged Rhodey to find out where he was going next. He agreed, and as soon as the video call ended, she broke down crying. When Ant-Man returned, they figured out a way to travel through time, and this was their last and only shot of getting their fallen friends back. They gathered the remaining Avengers up, and Natasha went to get Clint. She found him as he was murdering criminals, and seeing her made his face change completely, telling her that she should not be there. She replied, saying that neither should he, and told him that what he was doing would not bring his family back. She then told him that they found something that might. He told her not to give him hope, and she took his hand, saying that she wished she could have given it to him sooner. They all split up, going back in time to specific moments where they could get the Infinity Stones before Thanos could. Natasha went with Clint, Nebula, and Rhodey to Morag in 2014, and she and Clint took the ship to Vormir to get the Soul Stone. When they arrived, they were met by Red Skull, who said to Natasha that in order to get the stone, they must lose that which they love, a soul for a soul. When Clint did not believe him, saying that he was making everything up, Natasha told him that he wasn't, and she said that Thanos left there with the stone and without Gamora. It all added up. The two held hands, and both offered to sacrifice themselves, which the other protested. Natasha told Clint that she had spent the last five years trying to get here, so that she could bring the others back. Clint argued, saying that he had turned into a murderer, and Natasha replied saying, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. The same thing that Clint said when she asked why he spared her all those years ago. For Natasha, this was her repayment to her best friend who had a family to go home to. The only family that she ever had were the Avengers, and she knew that they were gone unless she did this. The two put their heads together, knowing that one of them was not making it out alive. This was the longtime best friend's final moment together. The two fought each other, an emotional battle, as they knew that the winner of the fight was going to die. Clint jumped off the cliff, and Natasha grabbed onto him, clipping a harness to him that was connected to the mountain. Clint was latched on, unable to let go, and he held onto Natasha with all of his strength, desperate not to lose his best friend. Natasha looked into his eyes, and told him to let her go. Clint cried, begging her not to do this, but she told him it was okay. She looked at her best friend one last time before she pushed off the mountain, forcing Clint to let go. Natasha Romanoff was gone. Natasha gave up her life for the only family that she had ever had, the family that made her a better person. Before them, she had never had anyone, but when she finally found those that she cared for, she did not hesitate to give her life for theirs. When Clint returned and everyone asked where Natasha was, he told them that she was gone and that she wasn't coming back. Her death affected all of the Avengers very heavily, especially Bruce, who still had very strong feelings for her. He tried to bring her back when he used the Infinity Stones to bring the others back, but when it didn't work, he had to accept the fact that she was gone. No one was as affected and grateful to her than Clint. He said to Wanda that he wished that she could have known that it worked, and Wanda replied saying that she knew and that she was at peace. Natasha Romanoff beat all odds, leaving the life of the Red Room and her assassin days behind and becoming a hero that anyone would be proud to fight alongside with. She died a heroic death, an act of selflessness and bravery to save the world. Black Widow will always be remembered as the hero that gave her life to save billions. Thanks so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great videos on the way.